We welcome you in the first class Emirates Lounge in Concourse 2 in Dubai Airport. In true Dubai style, the new first class Emirates Lounge here at Terminal 3 is big. Over a thousand square meters of luxury and calm away from the bustling atmosphere in the rest of the terminal. The airline says it spent just over $90 million on building and upgrading lounges since 2005. And it's not the only carrier to be spending heavily on a part of their operation the majority of their passengers never get to experience. With business travel on the rise again following the slump during the dark days of the recession, competition between airlines to hold on to the people who buy the most expensive tickets is fierce. It's really important if they're going to attract uh, the top business class flyers um, to have some way of looking after them while they're in the airport. Uh, perhaps once you could go walk straight into an airport and be out of there in half an hour. But now with the security, people are in there for at least a couple of hours. And during those two hours, uh, they want to be comfortable and they, ought to, uh, they also want to be productive. The game changer for us is to do that on a night flight. The customer has a nice meal, does a bit of business, gets on the aircraft, goes to sleep, arrive in New York, fresh and go, you go straight into your business meeting. I think some of the best lounges are absolutely amazing. They have uh, full service spas, which are free of charge. Um, in the case of Virgin Atlantic's Clubhouse in London, they have, uh, as well as a spa, uh, a hairdressing salon. They also have pool tables and, of course, a, a great range of food and drink. For many increasingly hard-pressed business travellers, being on call 24-7 is now part of their job spec. And the biggest bonus an airline lounge can provide, a peace and quiet and a good Wi-Fi signal. The lounge project that Emirates has been running since 2005 uh, has cost us over 90 million US dollars. I think broadly when you look at what customers expect, they want excellent premium food and beverages, they need Wi-Fi and they need a quiet place. In America, this is BA's latest lounge at Newark Airport at 8,000 square feet. It's part of a multi-billion dollar plan to upgrade the airline. Consistency is really important, especially for frequent flyers. You know, these are the guys who fly with us maybe 40, 50 times a year and they know exactly what service they're going to be getting at every stage in the process, but also working with our design team so that we've been working with sort of designers like Osborne and Little to make sure that we get the same kind of fabrics. We want to be much more contemporary, more welcoming, and a much more sort of refined British product. But if you're not lucky enough to travel at the front of the plane very often, are there other ways to get access to airline lounges? Often when you're in a lounge, you look around and think, how can all these people be flying business class? There aren't enough seats on the plane. In fact, a lot of them are flying economy. They're just flying on fully flexible, expensive economy tickets, and they'll, as a result, uh, gain access to the lounges. If you're trying to get into a lounge without a premium class ticket, then airline loyalty is your lifeline. If you sign up to an airline's air miles program, the trick is to try and stick to flying with that airline as much as you can. Then you'll travel up the reward ranks and many airlines now offer free lounge access once you've reached a particular membership tier, even if you're flying with them in economy. You can't let everybody in because otherwise there's no cachet attached to it. So it's about making sure that people have the right tickets for the right lounge and then if they want to progress then clearly we give them an avenue that's, that's clearly marked out about how they can do that. If you fly regularly at the back of the plane, but not always with the same airline, it could be worth your while looking into some of the schemes where you pay an annual membership to gain access to a string of airport lounges around the world. Great news if you know you'll be travelling a lot over the next 12 months, but a possible false economy if you don't. If you're an infrequent traveller, then many airlines, many in the States, sell one-off on-the-day lounge passes. If you're an infrequent traveller, then many airlines, many in the States, sell one-off on-the-day lounge passes. But remember to try before you buy and ask to see exactly what you'll be getting for your money. Not all airline lounges are as chic or empty as they may like to pretend. And it's also worth remembering that several credit card providers reward their high-value customers with free lounge access at selected airports. So check the small print next time your statement arrives. Finally, if none of those options apply to you next time you're in Dubai Airport and you're seeking some solitude, if the lounge is out of bounds, then perhaps you might consider the snooze cube instead. Your own private pop-up lounge with a bed, TV and Wi-Fi access. All yours for $15 an hour, but don't forget to bring your own sandwiches.